So we have got a 2005 F 350 that got towed in here. Um, pushed it in here. What is going on here? Oh, I turned this off. Dog on it. We're going to. Uh, it uh, story was uh, just got fuel. Went to pull out of the fuel station and the fire went out and wouldn't start, which we better check. I know that it's, I tried to start it out there without the scan tool. And the batteries were pretty low and it wasn't even firing at all. So, nope, doesn't smell like diesel. Don't smell any gasoline in there. So that's not the issue anyway. Batteries were dead, so I got the battery charger on her. Come on. Okay. That's, oh, I gotta turn the key on, yep. Oh, I heard the, uh, heard a weird noise out there. It sounded like maybe the fuel return regulator on the secondary fuel filter up there heard a anyway let's see look at the VIN number oh this is a federal emissions oh 2005 no math sensor I hate those most of the trucks I see around here are California Geez, I thought by shutting this thing down after I updated it, it might get its act together a little quicker, but uh, should we do a smart detection? No, let's just go right to the PCM. We'll do that later. We'll check code, see if we have a code first. That'll maybe lead us in the right direction. If we have some electrical fault or something with the IPR regulator. Okay, let's read default codes. Oh boy, we got all the fuel level sensor. Yeah, normal. Uh, cylinder three glow plug. Well, that isn't gonna, none of this is gonna cause, this is pretty typical. These, you know, the uh, little spring on the rheostat in the tank there, the little tab that on the sensor you know, either that's worn out or we have a bad sp uh, spot in the windy. I mean, it's common on these. You need a new fuel sending unit. No big deal. We're not going to want to clear that. Not right now because our memory is not very good. So let's look at the data stream. Hopefully we've got enough in the battery to crank it and look at our some vitals. Uh, injection control pressure. Uh, let's see, what else do we want to look at? Probably injection control pressure only, but we'll look at the, uh, we'll see what our voltage is on our injectors. We'll see if we're getting, well, that, won't worry about that. Not desired. See what our regulator is doing and see what our ICP is. Okay, so, yeah, we got 48 and a half volts on the Thickum. So we're normal, uh, 1484 on the IPR. So we're sitting at zero on the injection control pressure. So let me see if it'll crank and we'll see if that comes up. Ah, you son of a bitch. Well, so far, so far not a Boy, it ain't doing diddly dip, is it? We should be showing some oil pressure by now. Whoops, where are we at there? Yeah, we're not showing any oil pressure. Got the steering wheel out of the way. Where are we at there? Jesus. Yeah, nada. Yeah, we're not getting any oil pressure. Oh, we were coming up on the... Uh... OK. 
Okay, well, we did have some PSI on the... Let's go ahead and... I don't think our base oil pressure is coming up, though, because, you know, you'll get a little wear in the bearings, and you'll actually hear the crankshaft flopping around in there. And this thing's probably got some... Well, we got a TVC fault. Probably pretty high mileage. I didn't check the mileage, but let's see what happens here. Oh. Okay, well, let's go... Shut up. Let's go and uh, let's go pull the uh, fuel filter off since we weren't showing any base oil pressure and uh, we'll see what's going on in there. Hang on. So we pulled off the oil filter after all that cranking. It didn't get any oil pressure. Filter's pretty dry and there ain't no oil in there. I mean, there should be a little bit. It should have, you know, as well, we didn't have any oil pressure on the gauge, so I was trusting the gauge. So we've got our jumper wire hooked up to the bullet connector that goes directly to the solenoid on the starter. And we're gonna touch it to the positive and hopefully not blow ourselves up. And uh, we're gonna watch and see what's going on down yonder. So there's the oil filter housing. The oil should come up in there when I, of course it's not going to, but it should. So let's see what happens. Oh, I'm not making a good connection here. Hang on a second. Okay, there we go. Now, let's watch down in there. And on the uh, bottom side there, that's where the oil is going to come up in there if we, in fact, are making any oil pressure, which we're not. So, here we go. <laughs> nada, nada, nada. So... Can this possibly be that we have another probably lifter failure? I do hear uh, a drumming in the uh, intake. So, um, yeah, obviously our oil pump is not working. And on these, that means bad news. That means we more than likely have a failed lifter and has gone through, you know, needles. Same scenario. Needles go through the oil pump destroy it destroy the front cover and then you're not making any oil pressure so uh need to talk to the customer um see which direction he wants to go in i know that uh he loves this truck and he was said he had like one more payment on it so uh unfortunately for him i mean you know i'm I feel for you, I do, because, you know, I don't want to spend money on my stuff either, but, you know, if you have a 6.0, that's, this is one of the problems that they suffer, especially when they get higher mileage, so, you know, not much you can do about it. You're either going to fix it or throw it away, so, you know, we'll try to do it as economically as possible, but, uh, you know, sometimes you just got to do what you got to do so uh stay tuned i'll uh, come back with a report on how we're going to handle this thanks so we're back to our 2005 with no base oil pressure so what i did i talked to the customer I actually he's local so he came down here and i gave him as many options as i could at this point uh, uh short block option used engine option and i can't really, I mean, I don't know, 216,000 miles, I don't really have, uh, you know, a scenario for this, because I have no, I, I mean, what do the cylinders look like, what's the crankshaft look like, can we, can we get some more life out of this thing, um, I don't know that, and in order for me to find out, I have to disassemble the engine. You know, I mean, I'm gonna have to pull cylinder heads off, look at the cylinders, measure as much of them. I mean, you can get a pretty good idea of what's going on in there generally, you know, by looking through the top and rotating it around. I mean, you can get a general idea. Uh, I don't know any of that right now. Uh, I haven't even looked at the oil pump, but I, you know, the, we have no oil pressure, so, and I do have a, uh, a uh, thump in the uh, intake when it's cranking, so I know I have a valve train issue. So. You know, it's safe to assume that we have a failed lifter. Um, you know, he was asking me about, you know, hey, can we, is there any way we can patch this thing? But, uh, I mean, 
and you know we discussed it and he knows that that isn't right and i can't do that because you know i'm generation x and and the amount of of uh find out is directly proportional to the amount of fuck around put into it so um you know we just don't do things like that because you know yeah i could toss and you know drop the pan off clean the metal out of it because uh, there's going to be some debris in the bottom of the pan, you know, hopefully a lot of it will be stuck to the magnet and, uh, you know, hopefully get all the big chunks out. But we still have uh, needles likely that are going to fall out and end up in the pan and, you know, go through a, a new oil pump if if I just threw that on there. But, you know, he he uh, uh, mused, you know, hey, can, you know, what, you, you know how people are. It's a, It's a shock. It's a tragedy when you're... 17 year old truck takes a shit on you but you know i mean i mean it's not funny but you know i mean we're we gotta have uh you know we need it in in the age when uh not a single freaking politician at any level or government employee at any agency has one bit of integrity you know we need to have you know at least some of us need to have ethics and you know that's us in generation x but uh anyway stay tuned for this uh i'm gonna see if i can round up a used engine and and go that route is that the best option sometimes it is i've had really good luck so far with used engines uh if you buy them from you know certain places you can usually get a good engine and they always come with some sort of guarantee uh you know of course the best option would be you know a long block for this but that's also the most expensive option the the next best option would be a short block and and uh, but there again we don't know what kind of work we're going to have to do to the cylinder heads you know to get them up to to a good standard so uh, anyway uh, we're going to have to wait and see on this so we're going to get on to something else while we're uh, figuring this out so um what we'll, what we're going to do with this. So anyway, uh, thanks for watching and, uh, have a good night.